Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday night. And just wanted to share a few things with you uh, from God's Word. And just to pray with you this evening. I hope you're doing well this week. And uh, as we said last Sunday, uh, that this coming Sunday, the, um, the recommendation uh, to not meet with more than 10 people has been lifted for now. So what we plan on doing this coming Lord's Day is meeting again at 11 o'clock in the parking lot. And I believe uh, that the majority of the people feel comfortable doing that this coming week. But what we have planned, uh, and, and things could change, but uh, we'll mention this Sunday whether we will do this or not. But hopefully we can meet in the church on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And uh, we'll do that with uh, several different uh, guidelines that we want to go by. Uh, certainly this term that we've used, uh, we hear every day, this social distancing, uh, we'll try to do that. We'll have everything uh, sanitized best we can. Uh, we'll try to go and clean uh, the pews. And uh, as you come in, we'll probably just have the doors open where you can walk on in, not have to touch uh, the doors. And uh, then you can come in and sit down. We'll uh, Certainly you can sit with your family, but we'll try to have some distancing among uh, the people. And uh, what we'll try to do is if you'd like to come sit in the parking lot, we'll try to have the FM transmitter uh, going that evening as well. And so we have to do a little bit of work and getting all that hooked up. But uh, we'll try to do that. If you'd like to come just sit in the parking lot, you can do that. And then if you'd like to come into the service, there's some that feel comfortable. Uh, I know I've been to Walmart and Lowe's Hardware and some other stores, and it's just uh, uh, people going to and fro and uh, not a lot of distancing really that I've seen. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, we'll try to have some uh, some guidelines, try to keep everybody safe. If you'd like to come in and uh, sit for the service for service on Sunday evening, uh, we're planning on trying to do that. And so just keep that in mind, and uh, we'll uh, try to get you the radio broadcast put out there on Saturday evening, and I know that'll be a help to some of you that like to listen to the broadcast, and uh, we want to make that uh, available for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask the Lord to bless this evening. Let's pray one for another. Let's continue to pray for Brother Bob Beck. He's been in the hospital, and let's remember Brother Bob, Sister Louise as well. Uh, they've really went through a lot, and let's pray that God will give them grace. Let's continue to pray for Sister Violet Marlowe. Uh, let's remember Sister Brenda Newsom. Pray for her uh, this evening, if you will. And then uh, Sister Mary Catherine. Uh, let's pray for Sister Carol Wall uh, and different ones that have been shut in, and uh, many have not been able to come be with us. But it's been so good to see a good crowd each Sunday. I appreciate you coming out, and I hope that those services, these services, uh, that we've had on Sunday has been a help to you. And uh, I, I believe it's been good for me. I've enjoyed it. Uh, certainly different, but I've enjoyed that. We want to continue uh, to do what we can. All right, but let's pray together. Pray for the message this evening. I'll be preaching from the book of Ruth, chapter number two. And uh, I want to give you just a few thoughts this evening, but let's pray together. Let's pray now. Father, thank you for this time we have, to, Lord, just to open the word of God once again. I pray, Lord, that you'll speak to every heart. I pray, Lord, that you'll comfort us and uh, encourage us. Lord, we need the encouragement that comes from the Bible. God, we need the encouragement that comes from gathering together. And, uh, Lord, that's been hindered somewhat, but we thank you for what we've been able to do. I thank you for the, uh, the, uh, the opportunity to get on Facebook and to put these things out there and on YouTube as well. Uh, I pray that these messages will be a comfort and a help and a strength to those that listen. Now, Lord, we pray for these requests that's been mentioned. Sister uh, Louise, Brother Bob, we pray for both of them. Lord, touch Brother Bob and help him in this time. We pray for Sister Violet. Uh, Lord, continue to help her to recover. Sister Brenda, Sister Murray Catherine, uh, we pray for these. Sister Carol, Lord, all the ne many needs, we pray for these. God, help each one. I pray, Lord, for our people. Lord, you keep them safe. Watch over them. Lord, I pray that the best days are ahead. I pray that, Lord, we'll have uh, a move of revival and awakening. I pray, Father, that we'll fall in love with Jesus afresh and anew. Lord, I pray that we'll have a, an appreciation for, for the church in a greater way than we've had. I pray, Lord, you'll bless us tonight. 
Lord, lead and direct in this message and speak to every heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bible this evening, turn with us to the book of Ruth, chapter number two. I want to start out by reading the first three verses that we find in Ruth, chapter number two. The Bible says in verse one, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth and of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto, Ro un unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Now, I want to preach tonight. And I, I see the Bible says that she went out in to the field to glean ears of corn, the Bible said. The Bible says in verse number three that it was uh, a part of the field that belonged to Boaz. Now, there's so many messages, so many different ways to deal with the book of Ruth. And I've tried to, over the years, preach from the book of Ruth, and I've enjoyed doing so. What a great book of grace. What a great book of redemption. And uh, what a blessing this book has been to me. I've covered it many times, preached from it many times. I've heard a lot of great preaching from this book. But I want to preach on this thought tonight of gleaning in the field of Boaz. Now, uh, Ruth came from Moab. The Bible tells us about that in the story we read in chapter number one, that she came from Moab. She was a Moabitess woman. And we know that Naomi, her husband, uh, Elimelech, they went down into Moab. They left Bethlehem, Judah, went to Moab, and the Bible says their two sons, Malon and Chilion, uh, they found Moabitess wives. And one of them was Ruth, and the other was Orpha. Now, when we think of Ruth, she came out of Moab. Now, when she gets back into Bethlehem, Judah, she came back with Naomi, her mother-in-law. And when she arrived there, the Bible says that she went out into the field to glean. Now, I want to talk about this thing of gleaning for just a little bit. Because the Bible gives us some clear instruction on what this was all about. You see, under the Mosaic system, there was a law of gleaning. The Bible tells us back in Leviticus chapter number 19. Now listen to what the Bible says here. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 19 in verse number 9, And when you reap the harvest of your land, if someone had a field and they had a, har had a harvest, it says here, when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Now he tells them here, when you go out into your field, don't reap the corners. And don't glean everything. And if you have a vineyard, don't get every grape. He said, leave this for the poor and for the stranger. Now this was God's way of taking care of the poor. And he did that. Now the farmer, what did the farmer do? Well, the farmer plowed the field and planted the field and plucked from the field. But don't forget, God gave the sunshine, he gave the showers, and he gave them strength that they might go out and glean from their, or, or reap from their own field. So they had their part, the farmer did, but God had his part. God said, when you go out to reap, don't reap the corners and don't, don't take everything and don't take, if you have a vineyard, don't take every grape. Leave that for the poor. Now, God certainly did take care of them, didn't he? Now, as Leviticus 19 and verse 10 said, Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. Now, there are four groups of people. Now, we're talking about gleaning here. There are four groups of people that would receive the blessing of the gleaning. Now, I want you to remember as we relate this to the story in the book of Ruth, 
that Boaz, it was his field. Now, if you know anything about the book of Ruth, Boaz is a type of Christ. And uh, Ruth is a type of the Gentile bride, the church. Now, here we see that there are four groups of people that would receive a blessing. They would receive something from this thing called gleaning. Now, the first one was the poor. Now, I want you to understand tonight, relating this to the sinner, that every sinner is poor. So that means that God has given provision for every sinner. Every sinner is poor and undone. They don't have anything. They, they don't have anything as far as salvation or the blessings of heaven. Every sinner is poor. And I want you to see tonight that Ruth was poor. And uh, he said that the poor would receive the blessing of the field. Hallelujah for that. But we also see that the stranger would receive the blessing of the field. Now I want you to know tonight that every sinner is a stranger. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, and verse number 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now here we see that every sinner is a stranger. We are we were the enemies of God. We were outcasts. We were strangers. We were aliens. But the Bible says that when it comes to the gleanings, it said leave some for leave the corners and leave some for the poor, but also for the stranger. Oh yeah, leave provision there for the Gentile. And you and I and the church is made up predominantly today of the Gentiles. God said, leave something for the stranger. Now, you know that Ruth was a stranger. The Bible says here in our, in our scripture, in Ruth chapter number two, she identified herself in verse number 11. She said, I am a stranger. Boaz knew of her condition. In verse 11 says, unto, it says, she come to, unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. Now, here we see that she was a stranger. And so he said, the Bible says, the law of gleaning leaves some for the poor. Ruth was poor. Leave some for the stranger. Ruth was a stranger. And so were you and me. But then we read also in Deuteronomy chapter number 24, in verse number 19, dealing with the gleaning, it says there, when thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheaf, sheaf of, in the field, Thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. Now, Leviticus tells us in chapter 19, also over in, I believe, chapter number 22 or chapter 23, I believe it is, in verse 22, that they would leave it for the poor and the stranger. But we go on a little further when we read uh, the account in Deuteronomy chapter 24. It says also leave it for the fatherless. Now I want to relate this to every sinner as well, that we were fatherless. Now I know we were of our father, the devil, but we were fatherless when it comes to a heavenly father, to a good father. We didn't have a heavenly father. And the Bible says that we as sinners, God has made provision that we that did not have a heavenly father could have a heavenly father. And so we see that the gleaning was for the fatherless. Now I also relate this to Ruth as well. The Bible says when Naomi told Orpha and Ruth to go back because all three of them's husbands had died she told them there in, ver in chapter 1 and verse number 8 said, And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. Now I know, I know I've read up and studied on what this means. The daughters would go and would be separate. The women be separate from the men. And they would go and they would be with the mother. And Naomi was saying here, You would relate better to your mothers than you would to your mother-in-law. 
Now, Naomi may have had, or Ruth, I should say, may have had an earthly father. But it said to go back to your mother. But when she left her homeland, when she left Moab, she came to a place. She left father and mother. She was fatherless in the land. So here the gleaning dealt with the fathers. But it also, according to Deuteronomy chapter 24, it also dealt with the widows. Now, a widow was one who did not have a provider, who had lost her husband. And Ruth had lost her husband. She didn't have a provider. But every sinner has lost their provider. They didn't have someone to take care of them. I'm talking about in the spiritual realm. Thank God we have a, a God in heaven that says, I want to take care of you. I want to provide for you salvation. I want to give to you life. So here are the gleaning. When we get to Ruth chapter 2, Ruth goes out in the field to glean. And according to the law, of gleaning in the Old Testament. It was for the poor and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow. And this applied to Ruth. It applies to you and me today. There are sinners that have come to Christ and God allowed us to glean in the field and allowed us to have and took care of us. What a blessing that is. Now let me say this. This gleaning may have started by a law but it ended by grace. The Bible says in back in Ruth chapter 2 and verse number 8, Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Now notice verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? Amen. Thou ha that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Here she said, Why have I found grace in thine in thine eyes. Now this may have been a law. And it may have started by a law that the corners would not be reaped, that they would be left. But here we see that it ends in grace. Let me say that our walk, it all started with a law. See, the law was our schoolmaster that showed us that we were lost and undone without God. But I'm glad it's ended in grace. Hallelujah. And thank the Lord for that. Praise his holy name today that we are saved by grace, not by law, but we're saved by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Now here we see that this ended in grace. Now the Bible said that she gleaned in the field of Boaz. Now I want you to notice this field and we'll close here in just a couple of minutes, but I want you to see this field. I want you to notice, first of all, it was a fertile field. The Bible says in verse 17, So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. A barley. Now we see that an ephah was a bushel. It was a good day's wage. Let me say that God's field of grace is a good provider. This was a fertile field. God's grace is fertile. It's a provider. It provides things. Let me say that grace provides works. You see, we're saved by grace through faith, but we're saved unto good works, the Bible says. It makes it very clear that we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You see, God's field of grace produces works. It produces fruit. There'll be fruit in the life of a child of God. It produces joy. Do you have any joy tonight? I do. I know the joy of being saved and what a joy that is. So this field that she gleaned in was a fertile field. But let me also say it was a friendly field. The Bible says in verse number 13, Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me 
And for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread. And she sat beside the reapers, and she reached, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, the bundles, the handfuls. He said, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. The Bible said that they were just they were dropping off handfuls off the back of the wagon, amen. And that's exactly how God treats you and me. I'm glad that this field that we have been gleaning from, I'm glad that God drops off handfuls of purpose. Oh, what a blessing it is. Ever since I've been saved, God has just dropped handful after handful after handful. And my life is blessed. And my life is good. And I have troubles and I have struggles. And I deal with battles on a daily basis. But I'm glad that I have a God. And I'm glad that I'm in a field where God is looking after me. And he's looking after you. And he has given us handfuls of purpose. It's a friendly field. God has been so kind to you and me. He knew her situation. He knew that her husband had died. He knew she was poor. But he showed her kindness. Now we have a God that showed us kindness. And what a blessing that is. It was a fertile field. It was a friendly field. But lastly, it was a familiar field. You see, the Bible says in verse number 18, And she took it up. And went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had re reserved after uh, she uh, was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. Now here Boaz was family. Boaz was a near kinsman. And when we think of the term kinsman redeemer, we think of the Old Testament Boaz, but we think of the New Testament Jesus because Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. He's near kin. You see, he's God. He's so much God that he didn't sin, but he was man that he hungered and he suffered. And he identified with you and me. Christ, who is God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he is our kinsman redeemer. And this field was a familiar field because it was of a near kinsman. Now I'm glad today that I know Jesus as my personal savior. I'm glad that I have been permitted to glean in the field of Jesus. And I'm glad that God has been friendly to me. I'm glad that he's been friendly to you. If you don't know him as you say to you, you can today if you call upon his name and he'll save you. I want to thank you for watching this video and listening to this message. I hope you got something from it. Certainly, I put the time into study. I want to give you something that you can glean, something that you can receive. And I enjoy preaching his word. I enjoy studying his word. But I'm glad that this is a reality today. God's word is true. I want to thank you for being with us. We're looking forward to seeing you on this coming Lord's Day. And I hope you have a great week. Enjoy the rain. We're getting plenty of it. God's dropping down rain out of heaven. And he knows we need it. 
And so we thank him for that. We thank him for being good. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Thank you for, Lord, letting us glean in your field. Thank you for those handfuls of purpose you drop off, uh, Lord, that we can uh, enjoy and we can uh, we can uh, take in, Lord, and we can have for our own. God, thank you for walking with us every step of the way. God, thank you for being our kinsman redeemer. We love you today. We pray you'll be with each one, meet each need. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Until we see you, God bless you.